Well, hello you guys, and welcome to my next round of my makeup collection tour. And in this video, we are gonna be covering all my primers, setting powder, setting sprays, basically all my priming and setting products. If you missed the other ones, of course, I started off with everybody's favorite, the eyeshadow palette collection tour. I've done my foundations, my concealers, and now we're continuing on today. By the way, little side note, I wasn't even gonna do my makeup today. Honestly, I was just gonna jump on camera, tell you what's up and start filming. But <laughs> I don't know if any of you have any partners that work from home as well. My husband does, he has a company and he works from home a lot and <laughs> God bless him. He is a little bit loud on the phone. So I had to wait a little bit, baby's down for a nap. And I was like, you know what? While I wait, I might as well do my hair and makeup, even though I've been trying to let this little pimply guy rest and have a moment to heal and not cover him in makeup. But I did it anyways. And you know what? I'm glad that I did because I just feel, you know, a certain way. So anyways, I, it's not what this video is about. So we are gonna be diving into my makeup collection now. And if you're ready to join me, then let's get into it, boo. Boo. First things first, let's start with all the face primers. So this is one of my favorite primers. It works with almost everything. I love this. It's the Elf Luminous Putty Primer. You'll see I've made quite the dent in it. So I'm doing pretty good on that one. I definitely will be repurchasing this just cause I think it's so beautiful and glowy and it works really nice for my dry skin. And like I said, I compare it with so many things. So these two are my pore filling primers. I do consider this revolution to be a dupe to the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing. I believe this one just had a package change, but this is the Makeup Revolution pore blur no beer I, poor I think it was poor I don't, it all rubbed off but I think it's no pore blum no that doesn't make sense it's some oh here it is pore blur pore blur, blur primer I can see it a little bit on there it gets kind of like coagulated but it works really really nicely at smoothing out the pores what I, how I use this though is I put a primer everywhere and then I just put this into my more or like areas when I want to use something that is silicone based. And I honestly would say I prefer this one over the Smashbox. So if you're looking for a good dupe for a high end pore minimizing primer, check out the Revolution one. I've seen this at Target too. So really good. Oh, this is where I got the name No Pore Blum. So this is the Touch and Salt No Pore Blum Primer. <laughs> that name cracks me up. Uh, this is obviously a little travel size that I got and it's actually lasted a long time. I don't use it consistently, but I really like this primer and I definitely will be repurchasing it because I can use this one all over and it just plays really well with a lot of my foundations, including the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation that I love so much. And this one's a really good pore one too. It's not quite as thick, but it still has that kind of smooth effect and that's why I like it so much. Okay, these two Milani primers, I actually really love how they look. This is the Peach Glass Skin Primer. I'm not sure if you can get this anymore. Milani has been doing a lot of fruit launches, but they just don't last very long. I feel like by the time I get it in PR or even hear about it, it's already discontinued on their site. So I don't really like that. Same thing with the Supercharged Dewy Primer, but they both are really good. This glass skin looks really beautiful and really like glassy without looking too wet. And then the Dewy Primer, it's really moisture moisturizing and I really like them both. But the only caveat I would say is they're oil-based. So they really only pair well with a powder foundation or an oil-based foundation, which I don't really have any oil-based foundations. I have a couple serum ones that I'll work with, but the serum foundations I don't like. So that's a more me thing. If you're looking for an oil-based primer, these ones are good if you can still get it, but they both are just, they're beautiful. I don't know why Milani does that. I kind of wish they would just make it in like their regular line because that would be nice. Okay, I used to love this foundation primer. It's anti-redness primer. It has that little green tint to it. I used to use this all the time. I'm not even sure if it's gone bad at this point. It probably has, but it, it really is work. It works well when you're having those days where you're just having a lot of redness. It absorbs in. I use too much, so you can't tell, but it works really nicely as a primer and a little bit of a corrector that is more on the affordable range. Makeup Obsession, you can find at Target, I believe, unless it got pulled, and it's just really nice. The finish on it is just normal. It's not gonna be oil correcting. It's not mattifying. It's not moisturizing. It's just focused on the redness correction. This primer I got last year when I was testing out brands that nobody really talks about. Still don't really hear anybody talk about the found found brand, but this face smoothing primer, I don't even know how I feel about it. I've only, I've only used it that one time for that video. I need to use it again, see how I like it. So that's that. Oh, the sticky primer treasure trove right here. So these are those really, really tacky primers. If you're not familiar with them, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer was the stickiest primer I've ever used in my life. And you know what? Sometimes there's a time and a place. It's kind of an odd feeling when you go to use it, not gonna lie. It's very sticky. It's very foreign. It kind of feels like 
like you're putting school glue on your face a little bit, a little bit, but sometimes it, it pairs nicely with some foundations. So this is the original one. It's pretty pricey and I'm getting kind of low on it, but I honestly like the e.l.f. ones a little bit better, mostly because I like the smell. <laughs> This is the e.l.f. Jelly Prop Dew Primer. This one has a watermelon smell, and this one is a minty smell. It's the Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer, and then e.l.f. even came out with, basically, it looks like it's going to be 100% dupe for this one. It doesn't look like it has any smell at all. I forget what it's called. I think it's something grippy primer. So I these ones are more limited edition. So I think if you're looking for, if you can't find those, try the new e.l.f. one. If you want to just have an experience with your primer, it, it does leave like a glassy look on the skin, which is really pretty, but I can't really leave it to be itself. You know, I definitely need to put something on top because I don't like the feeling. It dries, it's weird, it's it's weird. It's a weird primer. If you don't, if you know, you know, you know what I mean? Okay, I used to love this CoverGirl moisturizing primer, but I haven't honestly used it in a year or so. So it's gonna be time to get rid of this one for sure. But I just wanted to throw it out there that this is a really good drugstore one. Not crazy dewy, but it just adds a bit of moisture. And again, it plays really well with a lot of foundations, but but, 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 probably my favorite moisturizing foundation is this Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. This is just a travel size, but the travel size honestly lasts a good amount of time. Really like this primer. Probably this one and my e.l.f. Luminous Putty are the two primers I pull the most. I would say, I think, I don't know. I kind of play around with all of them, but if I was like to go grab something really quickly, like in a rush, I would grab one of these, but this one's really good too. I just need to buy a new one of it because this is definitely old. So if you can't tell yet, I'm more on the dry side. So I tend to gravitate towards hydrating primers, smoothing primers, but I do like to keep a matte one in my collection for those days that I'm feeling like I'm gonna be more oily, maybe sweating outside, maybe it's the summer. And so I keep this Huda Beauty Matte Perfection Primer for that reason. I'm not oily, so I can't, you know, say if it works great for controlling that, but it works nice for me, who's more on the dry side, you know what I mean? So that's why I keep that one. I, uh, oh my gosh. I've never used this. This is the Catrice Prime and Fine Makeup Transforming Drops Waterproof. I want to use this. I want to use this. Um, I bought it a long time ago for a makeup video. Honestly, you guys, I want to say I bought it two years ago and it ended up getting like shoved somewhere. Yeah, you, it's not even, nothing's even, it's not touched at all. Um, I don't know if it's, they still make it, but I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. And then what the heck? I never used it. What is my problem? I have things like that in my makeup collection though. Tell me if you do too. Here are two little pot primers. Again, here's a Tarte one. Listen, when it comes to Tarte, I don't buy full size if I don't have to because their travel size products tend to be priced exactly as they should be per ounce. You know what I mean? Some product brands will like charge way more for their travel size, but Tarte for some reason, their primers, setting powders, some of their foundations are like half the size, half the price of the full one, which I love because of Primer like this takes so long to get through, this Tarte primer. This is the Timeless Smoothing Base Primer. I do really enjoy this primer a lot. I would just say, I mean, the putty primers would probably be a very similar comparison to these and the way they perform, but it is really nice and I do like that. This one, what is the foundation that I use this with? I think it's the new Tarte Cloud Cream that I like to pair this with. This is the Winky Lux Whipped Cream Primer. It has a really bouncy cloud mousse-like, you know what it feels like? You know what it feels like, but less chunky. Kind of like the Maybelline Dream Mousse Matte. Kind of has that feeling, but it is more smooth and creamy. Not as thick, not as chunky. And it is a really nice primer too. It's just more on the expensive side for the drugstore line because you can get this now at Target, if you didn't know, which is really exciting. It's just more of like that pixie kind of price point. These are two other little travel size, sample size primers that I have. So this one's from Glow Beauty. It is a face primer. I need to get it. I need to try it. I think it's more of a silicone base. So I put this in a little cup next to my where I get ready thinking that I will uh, use it and then I didn't. So I need to put it in my primer so I can see it when I'm pulling my makeup. Same thing with this. It was in the little cup, the Pure 4-in-1 Correcting Primer. I have used this a couple times and I do remember liking it, but uh, I gotta try it again. And oh my gosh, wait a second. I'm seeing that it expired. It expired April of last year. So maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. Last one, it's the Good Molecule Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I really like this one. I've used it quite a bit. I love pairing this with the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Foundation. It's a beautiful pairing and I could just throw it on really quickly. It gives me that boost of moisture and it's silicone free. So if you're looking for that, that one is a great option. And that's all my primers, guys. Time to release 
all these setting powders. Let's do this. Let's start with these pressed powders. I really love both of these, to be honest. This is my second purchase of the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores pressed powder, and I have hit pan on that. I feel like it does a nice job of kind of softening the pore area. Nothing is gonna completely reduce and get rid of your pores. It is completely natural to have pores. Hello, we're humans. We have human skin, but it helps to kind of soften and diffuse that. I really do like it a lot. And then same thing with the number seven. I feel like the Bye Bye Pores does correct, not correct, but it does diffuse pores a little bit better than the number seven powder, but this one's still really nice and I do like to use it under my eyes. And I believe this is supposed to be the dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury pressed powder. I haven't put that to the test personally, but I know Jessica Braun has done a bunch of videos on it and I think it looks like a beautiful dupe. What's nice about this one though, is it comes in more shades. So this one tends to be pretty light since it's more on the translucent side, but I love both of them. I think that they're really nice. Wait a second, I have one more pressed powder, but it did recently break. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Okay, I can't find it. So let's just pop a picture of it right here and we'll pretend that it's there. I don't know, I broke it recently, it shattered. It's really sad because it is discontinued. It's the Too Faced Banana Powder. I think that's a really good powder. It has a light hint of banana, has a little bit of that yellowing to help kind of brighten under the eyes. And I really like it. It's not as like pore smoothing, but it's a nice, not too drying type of powder that works really good for my dry skin. So if they are gonna bring back anything, that's one of my favorites. I think that they should bring that back and it doesn't have to be banana but something like that. Although the bananas are pretty cute. They look like little runts, you know, banana runts. Let's move on to setting powder. So this is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Boy, was this one hyped up. Between War Mercier and Hourglass, those two were the most hyped up powders, I feel like, of the time. I don't hear people talk about it too much anymore, but it has it, it has its day. I find the container super annoying, okay? It has like the stopper in there, but it's just not the type of container that I like. It looks beautiful, sure, but it's just such a fuss to use. You have to like shake it and then put it back down and then it's just, it's not my favorite. However, it doesn't pour out too much. So I guess, you know, pros and cons. The powder itself, I feel like it's a nice powder. It's just super expensive. And I feel like now in these times, these days, you can find dupes and you can find products at better price points, but it is nice. It's probably the nicest looking high-end powder that I've used. Yeah, I did like it more than Laura Mercier. That one was too drying for me. This one is a nice middle of the road, not too dry, not too matte either. Just a nice powder. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. This one had quite the cult following too in its heyday. It came in that cute little bakery bag. This one is a really nice powder. I actually really like this. It has a nice silica type of feel to it. And if you know, you know, it has like a little slip almost. It is a really beautiful powder on my dry skin. I do really enjoy this one. I have the shade, it's like the yellowy shade, Cassava. And I think it's not too yellow. It's just a really nice, if you just need a little hint, of yellow, you know, for under eyes and brightness and stuff. It's a really good one. You know, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know that milk makeup can tend to disappoint me. You know, this is not the worst setting powder. It's, it's just, it's fine. But the packaging with milk gets me every time. I don't know why. I think this packaging looks so beautiful and basic and just perfect. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how they do this to me. Even this, this little container right here, how you kind of lift it up is just so satisfying. And it has the netting in there so you can not overuse your product. But the powder itself, it's just fine. It's again, not earth shattering, not something that you can't get at the drugstore. I guess what you're really paying for is like the whole experience, not just the powder. And it is really, it is a really good middle of the road, not too dry and not too matte. It's and it, and it has a lot of product in there. Blur and set powder. So you do get a big bang for your buck. If you're looking for a good middle one, I would say this one, if you're looking for something from Sephora, that one is, it's good. It's good. It's a whole experience though that take it in. It's a good container, but it's also big. So keep that in mind. It takes up a lot of space. On the same vein, this is the Tarte what is it called? Shape tape? Yeah, shape tape setting powder. And uh, that sponge, I really need to clean that. This has also has the netting in there so you don't overuse it. It's actually almost completely done. I've been trying to go through my setting powders and use up what I have before I go and buy some more. So I've been doing a pretty decent job at that. I I remember feeling okay about this powder, okay enough. I was using this back when I was trying to find a dupe for the Laura Mercier. And it's a little bit more like the Laura Mercier, a little bit more on the dry side, so I don't tend to grab it very often. And it's probably gonna be time to declutter that before I even finish it, because I don't even know anymore. Okay, my favorite setting powder. If you're gonna get any setting powder, if you have dry skin, it's gotta be this one, boo. It's the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder, okay? 
if you know e.l.f., you know it's gonna be affordable. It's around the $10 price point, way better than like the $50 price point hourglass, and I like it so much better. I don't, it, I have a hard time grabbing my other setting powders because I like this one so much. I love it. You know, if you've watched me for a while, you know this is my second one. It is so beautiful. It's called Halo Glow, but it doesn't have a shimmer in it. It just makes my skin look healthy. And girlfriend, that's what I want. That's what I need. I don't want matte on my dry skin. I just want something that looks nice. And this one, it doesn't make my skin look matte even though it's a powder it's beautiful it just does a thing i have these little travel guys right here actually this might not be a travel i think this is the under eye powder this is the elf under eye and have i used it maybe once maybe twice don't remember it at all but it also has that really finely milled like hd finishing powder if you remember those i think i need to use this i'm pretty sure this is the under eye i need to give that one a go i also have the cover effects powder i've used it once or twice and it was just like all right i mean all those like high end powders to me kind of fall in the same category the milk the hourglass the cover effects i know people really love this one too and i just thought it was it was fine yeah it was what i would expect from paying that much you know this is a pressed powder from nyx it's the finishing powder i used this for a video a long time ago and i don't really honestly remember how i felt about it so sorry but i like travel sizes if you guys can't tell i mean if you have some travel products bust them out use them because sometimes you can get a lot of use out of them and you might find a favorite in there like this this. Okay, another Tarte Travel. Yes, it's all smashed. So sad. But um, this is the Tarte Halo Glow. No, sorry. Shape Tape Glow Powder. That's what it is. I have the shade Sunlit. This is the one I ended up being the first one that I bought was Starlit because they had only that one in a travel size. It's all smashed. It's a little too dark for my skin tone anyways. But this is one I fell in love with and I ended up buying the full size mostly because they didn't have a travel size in that. But it looks oh my goodness if you want that glowy skin and you kind of lose it when you go and put on your foundations and your powders like say you go with a glowy primer and you love how that looks and the more products you put on you're like well where did all that glow go well then you, this this is where you can get it back this is where we save the day you can get that back. you too can get glowy skin with this i feel like it doesn't add too much if you go in with like a really fluffy brush like this elf one this fluffy fluffy elf brush i just swirl it in as my final step and dust it all over so when I go in with that I've already say set my face with the elf halo glow all over and then I go in with this because it's not going to help like control throughout the day it's not gonna set my makeup it says it will but I just I feel like if I have to use that much it looks a little too glowy you know what I mean this is what I want to use when I want to dust it all over so give that healthy rich glow to the skin without looking greasy I love it. I love it, you guys. And I feel like I should mention these two because I know some people use foundation powders as a setting powder. This is a relic, okay? So let's enjoy this for a moment. This is the Smashbox Photo Filter Powder Foundation. I don't think they make this packaging anymore, but I'm pretty sure they still make the powder foundation. I remember liking this back in the day. I don't use it anymore because it's it's this is very old. Okay, let's just let's let's just it's call a spade a spade. It's very old. I probably shouldn't use it on my skin, but it is, uh, I do remember liking it enough. It's fine, but I think you could get drugstore ones that are probably just as good, honestly. And then this is the Tarte one that is recent to my collection, a recent edition, Amazonian Clay Diamond Setting Powder. I actually have really been enjoying it. So a little quick little update for you guys. I've really been liking this. I can either press it into my skin or dust it on for like a quick easy day and it has a nice glow to it. That looks really pretty. So I'm enjoying that. The shade is a teeny bit too dark for me. So I think I'll like it more in the summer when I get just a little bit more color. But this one, it's really nice. That was, um, Tarte, you know, my love affair with Tarte foundations and base products. Okay, that is too many setting sprays for one person, honestly, but let's dive into them. Pretty much all of these will be on the glowy hydrating side since like I've mentioned a million times I do have dry skin. This was one of my first loves. This is probably the setting spray that really changed the game for me that I was like, oh, I'm a believer because let me tell you back in the day, Urban Decay, right? They had like the setting spray, the all-nighter. And I used to use it in my professional kit. I had the all-nighter, I had the D-Slick. I used the chill for me. The all-nighter and the D-Slick for my skin, honestly, I just didn't, it didn't work. I didn't see a difference. But with all my clients, 
it worked so good. So I don't know what that was about. That was weird. But I did finally one day find Chill and Chill worked really good on my skin and I did like it. But it's the cooling and hydrating. This is an old, this is an old guy. I don't use it anymore. I just, I don't, I don't know why I keep it. But <laughs> this was a good one. I don't know if they still make it actually, the Chill version. But it was, it was good. But you know who turned me on to this, okay? Who loves this? Say it with me. Taylor Wynn, okay? She used to swear by this one. I don't know if she still uses it. But this one, this one, it, I have its caveat. So this was the changer for me. This is where I really saw the difference in setting sprays. So Catrice Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. It is beautiful, but it does have like more luminosity to it. There is like a pearlescence to it. It's not over the top, but it is there. However, I, st I still like it but it smells like Windex. <laughs> that's where, that's what I'm getting to. It smells like Windex. And sometimes if you over spray, it can look kind of glittery on your face. So a light hand is needed and you have to not um, care that it smells like Windex and chemicals. <laughs> it dissipates, but it's definitely there. I can't find my perfect setting spray. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second, but this one I've gone through like a million bottles of it so much so that one time I thought that I didn't have it anymore and I found, so I bought one and then I found my backup of it. I was like, oh my gosh, uh, I have too many. Okay. So those, those are that. So I was trying this Catrice one because a primer, a primer, a subscriber of mine actually suggested I try this when I was trying to find a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury one. So this it's, it's not quite a dupe, you know, just a little update on that. It's not quite to do because it just adds that bit of pearless pearlescence kind of look to your skin but it uh yeah it's just not quite there for me what I love about the Charlotte Tilbury one is it just looks so beautiful on my skin again it just adds like a bit of moisture without being pearly at all there's no pearlescence there's no glitter in it adds a bit of I just it's just perfect. It's almost perfect in every way. It just makes my skin look how I want it to look basically less powdery. Yeah, it kind of dissolves the powder a little bit. It's not going to be drying at all. It's not moist. I, I, I'm cautious to say moisturizing because it's not moisturizing. It's just perfect. It kind of leaves my skin how I want it to look and it sets really nicely for me and my skin type where it lasts throughout the day, but it doesn't like turn oily. It doesn't mattify. It's not pointless so it's hard to describe because it sounds like I'm describing a pointless spray that doesn't do anything it it does it keeps it how you want it it keeps it how it looks when you've done everything but it makes it last longer does that make sense where it just it's I see a difference not using it all and using it I feel like it makes a difference to use it I don't think it's an emperor's clothes situation I'm pretty sure it works I mean I've tried it multiple ways I've tried it you know spraying half my face and I do feel like it makes my skin last longer but it looks good. It just, it's how I like it. What I hate about it and why it's not perfect is it smells, say it with me, like Burger King dollar menu hamburgers with the ketchup and the weird buns that they use. I hate the smell. I actually repurchased this against my own better judgment because I was like, oh, they have wings on it now. They kind of changed the packaging. Maybe the smell is a little bit different. It's not different. It's the same. Why do they do that? I don't know. Maybe they're not using fragrance at all, but I hate the smell. I hate the smell and I can deal with it for Catrice because this is like a $6 setting spray, but this is like $40. So why must it be that way? I don't know, but they still got me. So it doesn't matter. This Flower Beauty one is all right. It's called Seal the Deal. It's an illuminizing setting spray, but honestly, I prefer the Catrice one more than this one. It's a little too just nothing. It adds more, it's more luminous, but I just, I don't feel like it helps my makeup last at all. Let me just pull out my million of Milani sprays. I am on their PR list, so I do get more of their products, but uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to, you know, tell the truth. I'm going to be honest. These setting sprays, I feel like are pretty good. If you don't mind a fruit fragrance, this one's not even open yet. That's the cherry one. I'm not particularly interested in cherry, so I'll probably end up decluttering that one. These ones were their first fruit line, I believe, and I thought that they smelled amazing. It's supposed to be their make it last formula, which is really good. But uh, yeah, I just feel like it's nice. It doesn't make my makeup last that much longer throughout the day. I haven't really noticed that much of a difference. I honestly feel like I have this makeup last, make it last matte. I feel like the make it last matte actually makes my makeup last. It's not that mattifying either. It's kind of nice. It's a little bit mattifying, not that much. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just, don't worry about these ones. You can get this one or the regular makeup last. But I did like 
going back to the supercharge. I mean, these are discontinued anyways, but this supercharged one I liked better because it's revitalizing. I did like it better than these ones. I felt like that one made it last a little bit longer and it was a bit moisturizing. Oh, and this one, the peach. Ah, oh, the peach line I really liked and I don't think it ever came to Walmart or anything, which was totally a missed opportunity. I think they only had it on their website. Illuminating. This was the closest I could get to the Charlotte Tilbury, but what's the point if you can't ever get it again? You know what I mean? Okay, I don't like this one. This is the Dewy Coconut Setting Mist from Elf. I don't know what it is, but with coconut products on me, it they always mattify a little bit. I don't know what that's about. They're always supposed to be dewy though, but I had the same experience with the Marc Jacobs coconut line where it actually kind of irritated my skin a little bit. I don't think I'm allergic to coconut. I ingest it. I drink coconut water like it's regular water, but for some reason, coconut products, they just don't do that for me. So I didn't like this one. Here's another Milani Rose Water. I liked Rose when I was pregnant. Fun fact, I really enjoyed it. Now that I'm not pregnant, hate it. Hate it, I don't want it. Uh, so no thank you anymore. The NYX, Bear With Me. This is kind of turning. I don't remember this being a color. So this is the Bear With Me Cannabis Sativa Spray. I remember liking it, but it's kind of getting a little bit off. And that bottle is huge, man. I did use a good amount of it. I think it's like a third used. This is another favorite of mine though. It's the Tarte Stay Spray. I've repurchased this as my second bottle and it's almost empty. I might get it again. No, I don't think I will because I, I like this one a little bit more. This one's just more keeps your makeup exactly where it's at. I guess that's what the difference is. If you're familiar with this one, this one adds like a bit more of a moisturized, healthy skin look. I don't know. Like it almost like, I hate to say plumps my face, but that's almost what it it feels like. This one keeps it exactly where it's at, not mad or anything. And it actually stays really well. I put this one to the test back in the day where I did like a treadmill test. And that was like one of the worst experience I've ever made myself do on YouTube because working out in a full face of makeup really is just not where it's at for me. I really didn't enjoy that but it was for science. It didn't, it wasn't sweat proof like it had claimed. I don't know about waterproof, but it does stay really well. So other than the sweat drips, it stayed really well. And I even have a little travel size for when I travel and I just refill it so I don't throw that away. And last one is the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist. I like the mister, but I actually don't like the product very much. I've never really enjoyed it. I thought because the mister is that like ultra fine, really beautiful mist. I like the way it sounds. I like the experience of using it, but when it comes down to it, it doesn't help my makeup last any better. Sometimes I'll go to use this if I feel like my makeup's looking a little bit dry. I'll spray this all over as like a refresher, either throughout the day or I'll use this this and then I'll use like a heavier duty staying spray, if that makes sense. So like to kind of plump up and then to stay. And that is that. Okay, that is my collection of primers, setting sprays, setting powders. I've told myself I'm not gonna buy any more setting powders. <sighs> but it's, I, I have done it. I have, I have, but I'm, I'm really trying hard to get through all these because that's a lot, okay? Do you have anything that you like really buy too many of? Because how many setting powders can I really get through? Those are all massive. So let me know what you tend to hoard when it comes to makeup, okay? Uh, don't forget to subscribe before you go so you don't miss the next tour. I have to like show you guys all my eye products, like eye glitters and things like that. And then I think that we're done with this and then I need to go into the declutter mode. So subscribe before you go. Follow me over on Instagram and TikTok if you want more quick form content and kind of more silly things like makeup reels and memes and things like that. I'm at Ashley Alix at all those places. But right now, I hope that you guys go run off and have a great, beautiful, wonderful, happy, lovely day.